Hi, I'm Andy, and uh, sometimes it's good to look at uh, a little piece of code that you think is cool in some way, figure out uh, how it works. Um, sometimes it can help us uh, become a better programmer. Uh, so I had a little bit, a uh, look at a little bit of code that I think is really cool, um, and I'm going to explain to you how it works. Uh, so uh, I'll tell you what, what it was. This was a bit of code that was part of a programming challenge. I'll show you the answer. Um, look into some of the hacks that, uh, that made it successful in this challenge. Have a look at some of the other answers other people gave to the challenge. And then look where you can find more info. So the challenge uh, was part of uh, the Code Golf uh, Stack Exchange website. It was to make a piece of art uh, using code uh, that fits into three tweets. So basically, you need to draw a picture that's uh, 1024 uh, square uh, pixels and uh, the code has to fit into three tweets. There's basically one tweet per uh, function. You get one function for each color. So you can do a, a red function, a green function, a blue function uh, and then uh, the computer renders uh, the pixel based on those three values, red, green and blue. Uh, and each function just returns a value between 0 and 1024 um, for how much red, green or blue at that pixel. So the functions get called repeatedly for every point. Uh, for example, if we wanted to just draw a beautiful red square, our functions would look like this. Uh, our red function would return 1023, which is the highest possible red value. Uh, uh, so the red function would return that, and the green and blue functions would return 0, um, and that would make a red square. Another example, if we wanted um, some colors blending nicely uh, from one place to another, we would return different values for different inputs. So um, uh, our red, green, and blue functions all take in these i and j, which are basically the x coordinate and the y coordinate. i is the x coordinate, j is the y coordinate. Um, so in the, in our example here, we make our gradient by returning the x coordinate for the red and the green functions, and the y coordinate for the blue functions. So that means that red and green uh, change gradually from left to right, and blue changes gradually up and down, and that's why we get that uh, lovely gradient. Okay, so I, I want to show you the answer that I really uh, liked and didn't feel too intimidated to understand. Uh, and it produced a picture like this, which I think is rather nice. Actually looks nicer uh, in real life. I suggest you uh, grab the slides or follow the link that I'll post in the uh, uh, the notes below the video um, so you can see the, the proper answer, because I've, I've shrunk it down to get it on here. It doesn't look so nice. Um, this answer was written by Ter Internets is made of cats. And you can see his URL there, or her URL there, to um, uh, their page on Code Golf. Uh, and here's their answer. So I'll just let you read this and we'll be done. Uh, no, really. I'll, uh, so this is their answer with the um, basically function declaration stripped off it. It's written in C. Or most of the answers are C because the challenge was. Um, uh, aimed towards writing code in C. Uh, so this is these are the three tweetable functions with, without their function declarations, and I'm going to break them down. And I'm mostly going to break down the top one. The others are pretty similar, um, slightly different. So what the answer is is it's it's three uh, Voronoi diagrams: one for red, one for green, and one for blue, superimposed on top of each other. And the Voronoi di diagram. Uh, is built by choosing some points in uh, it within your picture and then colouring all the other points on the picture by saying pick the pick the point that you're closest to, pick the site that you're closest to, this, this sites that we've picked, these points. Um, and all the all the pixels which are close to that site, or closer to that site than any other site, are all the same colour. So basically each each dot on the picture, each, each site that you've chosen on the picture um, has a colour, and everything that's closer to that site than any other site gets that colour. So, for example, the white dots here are the sites that we've chosen in the picture, and then the, the rest of the pixels in the picture are chosen, uh, so they're, uh, each, basically each of those white dots has a, a shade of red associated with it. Um, and if you're if you as a pixel are closer to that dot than any other, you get that colour. So you can see where so the white dots are quite close to each other, um, some of the pixels uh, 
uh, and don't show their colours, don't show the same colour for very long because as soon as you get halfway to another site you change over to a different colour but where there's a, a white dot that's kind of out on its own uh, there's a big area around it coloured the same colour okay so let's begin breaking down what the answer looks like so here's the function declaration at the top it takes in an i and j for the x and y coordinates and the first thing we do once we add some comments and line breaks um, is declare some variables. So we declare a variable called t, which is an array of size 64, which is going to hold the coordinates of the 64 sites. And if you wonder how an array of int can hold uh, a coordinates, uh, x and y coordinates, when it's only one int, um, well, yeah, good question. We'll get to that. Uh, then we declare k and set it to zero. That's going to be our loop count of uh, the loop we're going to have. Uh, then L is the um, the site that we've we've chosen. So this is remember we're doing one pixel here. We've got an x and y coordinate given in. Um, so we have to find out in order to draw this Voronoi diagram, we have to find out which site is closest to us. So L will be between zero and sixty-three to say which one of the T's is the is the site we've currently chosen. Uh, e is going to be used as a temporary variable, and D is the distance to whichever site is currently closest. So um, at the moment that's been set to a very large number um, so that any distance we then measure is going to be less than that. Okay, so then here is the, the main structure uh, of the answer. Let's move me over a bit. Let's move me... Oh, well, we'll move me in a second, okay. Um, I've really got now. Okay, so... Um, the answer starts off with some hacks at the beginning, which I'll talk about in a second. And then it's a while loop, keeping k less than 64, so k was our loop counter. Um, uh, uh, then there's some more hacks to set up um, the coordinates uh, inside t. K, inside t. Um, uh, we, uh, there's a hack that sets up the kth coordinate at this moment, so I'll talk about that in a second. So loop through all the, all the sites. Uh, and then measure the distance. So this if is basically saying, uh, give me the distance to this site. So um, e is this temporary variable, which basically holds on to the distance for a second. And then what we do is we do i minus tk. So what we're saying is that tk is basically the x-coordinate of this site, and i we know is the x-coordinate of the pixel we're looking at at the moment. So take one away from the other and then square it. And then add on. Uh, j minus, and then something which is a hat which I'll talk about in a second, which is the y coordinate of the kth site. So square that as well, and add them together, and that gives us the square of the distance um, to the to this particular site. We're looping through all the sites. This is the distance from i and j, which is our pixel we're trying to work out, to the kth site. Um, actually, it's the square of the distance. We won't bother square rooting it. Um, it'll work out the same. All the square roots will be um, if your square is bigger, then your square root is bigger, so we don't need to bother with that. So what we say is, we set e to be this distance value, square of the distance, um, but at the same time as setting e, we also say, uh, if that's less than d, then go into the body of the loop. d is the distance to the closest site, and you remember we set that up at the beginning to be a large number. So, if this site we're looking at now is the closest site, then set d... Uh, set d to be that distance, remember it, and remember the index of this site um, in L. So that's basically what you'd expect. We're go looping through all the sites and saying which one's the closest, uh, remember the distance to it, and remember which one it is. Okay, so... Stick me back where I belong. Um, and then at the end of the loop, so this is down below all that stuff we've just done, um, uh, We've we've end, we've finished our loop. We've gone through all the k's, and you'll see where k actually gets incremented in a minute. Um, so we've we've come up with an answer, which is L, which is which site is the closest one to us. Um, and what we want to do is return a color to represent that site. Um, and there's an, there's another clever hack here. The first of our clever hacks. Instead of actually making up a color for that site, we're just going to use its x coordinate. So um, the red value of the um, of this site is just going to be the x coordinate uh, of that site. So, um, yeah, we don't have to bother working out colors. Okay, so 
Um, just to say, the green and the blue uh, functions are basically exactly the same as this, except uh, the hacks are a bit different, and we won't go into exactly how. Okay, so now let's look at the hacks that I skipped over in my general explanation. So the first hack is, um, at the beginning of the call to red, we reset the random seed uh, to the current second, basically. Time zero means, tell me what time it is now. Um, and, we'll, uh, and then we use a random number, the random number generator to tell us the locations of the sites. So that means we don't, instead of memorizing all the sites somewhere in some variable somewhere, we don't need to bother. We just uh, use a random number generator to get them. And so long as every time the red function gets called, we're inside the same second, uh, all the sites will be the same because we've set the random number generator back to the same seed. But if, um, if while we're calling red, all these times that we call it to generate all these pixels, um, time ticks over to the next second, uh, things are going to go wrong. And actually, you can see that if you run the code um, on a relatively slow machine, you'll see a line across the picture where, where the second ticked over. Uh, so that was the first, uh, well, this is the continuation of the first hack, which is basically get hold of, uh, set the random seed, and then we get hold of the x coordinate by calling rand, which gives us a random number, uh, which we we know is always going to be the same every time red gets called um, for each k, uh, so long as we don't tick past the second boundary. So in order to get our x coordinate, we just call rand, and then we present it to dim, which is a variable we've been given up front, um, uh, which is the, the size of the um, yeah, size of the square, which is 1024. I should say, by the way, where we saw the uh, sq function earlier, underscore sq uh, to square things, that's a function that was provided as part of the challenge as well. Um, okay, so here's our next hack, which is a, a rather clever hack, which is how to get the y coordinate of, of one of these sites when we've only come up with the x coordinate so far. So the x coordinate was a random number. The y coordinate we get by anding k with 42 and then picking the x coordinate with that index. Okay, so basically we pick one of the previous x coordinates um, uh, and use that as our y coordinate. So <laughs> what that means is, uh, so that, uh, so by the way, we've only set up that things in T up to k at this point in the loop. So we need to be careful and make sure that the that if we're picking a y coordinate that's another value in t, we better be absolutely sure uh, that it's what it's a, a k that's lower than uh, than I mean an index that's lower than our current k, because uh, the stuff that later on in the uh, uh, array hasn't been initialized. However, we know if you end with something, you're always going to end up with something uh, less than or equal to it. So we're okay. So basically, it picks this. Uh, this number, which is 42 and k, and you can see in binary 42 is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, um, which kind of picks a few random bits out of k. Um, uh, so it ends it with k, and then uh, that's the index inside t uh, of the x coordinate that we're going to reuse as the y coordinate at this point. So at the beginning of this loop, you haven't got many... Uh, k's to choose from. If you're if you're at the moment on k equals one, uh, you add that with forty two, you get zero. So we know that the the second point in the second site uh, in this algorithm is always going to have the same y coordinate as the first point x coordinate. And similarly, the abs the actual the zero site is always going to have x and y be the same with each other because they're both going to use t t bracket zero as their coordinate. So this is by no means an unbiased way of choosing your y coordinate, but it works and makes a picture that looks pretty decent and it's a pretty cool hack. Okay, other hacks. Oh yeah, well the other the other thing to mention is that we save some uh, a couple of curly brackets if we use the comma here um, between these two statements inside the if instead of having um, two separate statements. We need a semicolon instead of a comma and curly brackets to surround them. So that's a little hack that saves a few characters. Um, and as I said before, um, the other hack is that the, the color is actually just the x coordinate of this site. So that was um, uh, that was how this code works. Pretty cool, I think you'll agree. Some other answers um, that I liked. 
This one, it doesn't animate inside three tweaks, um, but if you tweak the parameters and re-render um, a lot of times uh, with different parameters, you get this lovely looking animation, uh, uh, which is rather nice. A little bit of a picnic uh, blanket. Uh, this one, unbelievable. It doesn't quite fit into three tweaks, but my goodness. Um, a rendering of a Buddha Brot mathematical structure using ray tracing. Wow. Uh, this one, uh, lovely. And I think also ray traced picture of some aliens. Uh, this one with some lovely swirly swooshes. Uh, and some something that looks a lot like a, a lot of screensavers. Uh, and then uh, this beauty, which is um, the same person that did the alien, later on went on to manage in just these three tweets to produce a picture like that. You can't actually play the game. Um, so do have a look at the um, the Code Golf Stack Exchange uh, site. Uh, have a look at this question and see the other answers that people put in. Maybe have a go yourself. Um, uh, uh, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed um, uh, a little bit of a fun look at... Um, uh, a, a, a little, a little bit of code that's quite different, at least from the code that I write most days. Full of hacks and uh, uh, little ways of frigging things to fit them into um, 140 characters. Uh, if you would like to donate money um, to encourage me and help me to make videos, uh, please visit the, my Patreon page and pledge. Uh, you know, like two dollars every time I release a video, with a, with a limit every month on how much you want to. Um, give. Um, don't feel you have to do this. I'm very happy for you to watch these videos and enjoy them without doing that. Uh, but if you want to help, then please do. Um, it, you can find more videos on my YouTube video page. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I mostly tweet about videos I've made or blog posts I've um, put up. Um, if you follow my blog, that's kind of uh, I put the videos on there. I also uh, talk about things. The problems that I've been trying to solve, either in code or in setting up my Linux desktop, things like that. Um, if you're interested in um, my growing number of um, partially abandoned open source projects, have a look at artificialworlds.net. And see you next time.